thank you very much for the organizers, uh, to the organizers for uh, this workshop. I'm going to talk about uh, improved decoupling for parabola. And this is joint work with uh, Larry Guth and Dominique Maladak. Uh, consider a function f with Fourier transform supported on the thin neighborhood of this truncated parabola gamma. So this thin neighborhood is one over r neighborhood and r is a very large parameter. And then we decompose this neighborhood into finitely overlapping rectangles theta of size one over r times r to the minus a half. And then we perform a partition of unity adapting to this uh, covering theta. And f theta is defined as f fully restricted on each theta using, those parti using the partition of unity. Um, the decoupling constant dpr is defined as the smallest constant such that the LP norm of f is bounded by dpr times the little l2 sum of the LP norm of f theta. Uh, for any f with free transform supported on the thin neighborhood of the parabola. And so this, this decoupling inequality gives a formula of a recipe about estimating the LP norm of F and it turns out to be uh, use, very useful. The idea of decoupling was introduced by Tom Wolf in the year 2000 in his paper about local smoothing. And in 2014, Burgen and Demeter, they proved that dpr is bounded by a constant depending on only on epsilon times r to the epsilon for any p between two and six. So this epsilon is a um, positive arbitrary small number. And this Burkhan Demeter decoupling inequality here we only stated for the parabola and they also proved for the, the paraboloids in higher dimensions and also for the cone and other surfaces. This decoupling inequality stated here is sharp up to R to the epsilon. And there is a useful corollary that is the uh, streetcast estimate for tori. Uh, for example, the the corresponding streetcast estimate for tori uh, with this decoupling inequality is the following. Uh, consider a function phi with Fourier transform has frequency bounded by capital N. And this N should be viewed as something like R or square root of R. Um, and then we consider the linear solution to the Schrodinger equation with initial data phi. The solution, the, the L6 norm of the solution on the one dimensional torus, that's a circle, times the time interval zero to one is bounded by a constant only depending on epsilon times n to the epsilon times the L2 norm of the initial data on the torus. Um, so this n to the epsilon is a consequence of the r to the epsilon. Um, there are a few questions regarding those epsilons. For example, um, there is an open problem about uh, the D, whether we can bound dpr by, a, by an absolute constant c for p between two and six. When p equals to two, uh, this is known 
using the Poincharé uh, theorem, Poincharé's theorem, and and L two orthogonality. Then, uh, since six is the critical uh, p for the decoupling for parabola, um, there is also a question about determining the optimal constant for p equals to six. Well, um, Bochkan showed in an example that these six r can never be bounded by a constant. In fact, this six r is bounded below by log r to the one over six. And so, but what, what can we say about the precise upper bound? Uh, we are going to see some results. And so far, the upper bound uh, does, not, does not match the lower bound yet, but it's getting closer. And so also for the um, for the stochastic inequality for Torai, uh, as shown by the example of Buchan, the L6 norm of the solution can never be bounded by a constant times the L2 norm of, of the initial data. But one can ask, how about the weak L6 norm? And this question uh, I first heard from uh, Rowan, Rowan Killip. He asked whether the weak L6 norm of the solution is bounded by an absolute constant times the L2 norm of the initial data. So let's uh, look at Pochkan's example. And consider fxt to be one over square root of n times an, an exponential sum. So uh, this is fxt um, after some rescaling will be a function uh, with Fourier transform supported on the thin neighborhood, actually one on uh, I think n to the minus two neighborhood of the truncated parabola. But here we are interested on the, uh, this version without rescaling. Then for some integers a and q between uh, one and square root of n, uh, they are co-prime. And for any integer b between zero and q, we define this, the set m, a, b, q by uh, say the set of x and t such that x is in a, a one over n neighborhood of b over q and t is in the one over n square neighborhood of a over q. So uh, why do we define such a neighborhood? Um, oh, uh, this, the set. Well, you use some uh, number theory result. One can see that uh, for x and t in M, A, B, Q, uh, f, x, and t is roughly square root of n over q. I think this is uh, related to the major arc in the hardy little wood um, circle method. Now we kind of uh, quantify what is, how is the level set looks like for our F. Uh, for example, given any um, dyadic number A between one and square root of N, the set, the, the measure of the set such that Fxt with absolute value roughly A is bounded below by the union of m a b q such that q is roughly n over a square. So this the measure of the set, the level set is bounded below by a to the minus minus six. Uh, if we um, use this level set estimate we will see that the L6 norm of F is larger than log N 
to the to the one over six. But it seems that this example does not give a counter example to this weak L6 bound. So we might conjecture that the weak L6 bound is bounded by a constant times the L2 norm of the initial data. Um, but we don't know how to prove it. So let's look at some um, positive result. Um, there are some upper bounds for the uh, for the constant d six r. So after Buchanan Demeter decoupling, Zane Lee used um, he used some idea from efficient congruency and proved that d six r is bound by e to a constant times log r over log log r. And last year, joined with, joined with Goose and Maladak, we show that d6r is bounded by log r to a constant. And this constant c, I think, is 1 over 100. Oh, sorry, not is it's like 100. Um, so here is some idea. We are, we are interested in estimating the square function, the sum over theta f theta square, and then take the square of the square function. And using some uh, uncertainty principle, we might view this quantity, the square function integral as a sum over some weighted rectangles, Wt means uh, the a weight times the characteristic function of a rectangle. And this quantity is roughly, I can represent this L2 integral of weighted sum of two, a sum over a sum of weighted tubes, rectangles. And this quantity, uh, it studies the incidences between those weighted rectangles. So if those rectangles, they overlap a lot, then this quantity will be large. But if they don't overlap so much, this quantity will be small. And then um, we, we look at the frequency of this square function. And if the square function is dominated by high frequency, then we will be able to bound the square, the integral of the square function by sum over the little l4, a little l4 sum of the l4 norm of f theta. And this is pretty good because in, in general, we won't be able to get a little l4 sum. And then when it's low frequency dominate, we will be able to show that the We'll, we'll show a pointwise bound, that is the square function is bounded by a square function at a finer scale. So the relation between theta and theta star is following, uh, and theta prime is that theta is a large rectangle, and then theta prime will be those small rectangles, smaller rectangles that's um, near this parabola. So in other words, if it's low frequency dominant, then a coarser scale square function is bounded by a finer scale square function. And this is good because, for example, if we let the size of theta goes to one, then this will represent the uh, square, the, the f, this will represent f square. And so this, um, is kind of like, if it's always low frequency dominant, it's kind of like we have a square root cancellation for F 
at those points. And here we have some, this is some dichotomy. If it's high frequency dominant, then this little, little L for some, those F theta to the fourth, this quantity of sum over theta, this quantity uh, essentially says that rectangles do not overlap too much. And then we will gain from some geometric inform this kind of geometric information. And if it's low frequency dominant, then the, so the, the rectangles might overlap, but here we can we can make use of the oscillation. And so it eventually gives some information like the square root cancellation. And, and And this is uh, the very rough idea lies behind our proof. And the reason why we can obtain the log R to a constant C um, is because our approach uh, uses fewer steps of induction or iteration. And And we take very good care of the uh, of the those uh, weight functions and and the other constant lies in the proof. I think I will stop here. Thank you very much. <laughs>